people are really resistant to that idea and reading, you know, I, I'm just a one more layer of connection where I can share your work with guys that probably need it. <laughs> I have nothing to say on it myself, you know, but what I have learned is that masculinity and even like this word patriarchy that people in in tone like it means something you know it's it's really what men do together it's not this mirror image of feminism which is where a man wants a framework of a legal framework that, to control women <laughs> you know and I, I mean i i sympathize with the uh, the fact that our society's been really damaged by divorce and single motherhood and stuff so I, I don't I don't support those things but when men start to like whine and boohoo about how we need this we need this patriarchy to control women I just think well I don't that's not even what I what it is to me it's it's what men do in their own sphere to develop themselves and create a, a, a social um, environment that is functional for everybody else. We're going to lose a combination, 10 YouTube subscribers yeah. <laughs> and, and Facebook likes right now, yeah. because I'm telling you, patriarchy is for bitches. Okay. I mean, that's what I, patriarchy I, the legal, is. Yeah. It, it's like, it's like you're calling it comes daddy from government. Civilization. It's daddy okay. government to come and tell your women what to do. Okay. You, know? you got the, Who's the biggest sissy group out there? They got to strap on vest and get their women to commit suicides with bombs strapped to them. Okay. They're the Arabs. The Arabs are the biggest sissy fuck nuts out there. Okay. They need the whole village and the government to keep their women in line. Okay. Now, but where does that come from? That's the ancient cradle of these early civilizations. Iraq. Boom. Right there. So what is early civilization? It is the nomads coming in and conquering the cucked out goddess worshiping river civilizations and then taking every, every dude there, turning him into and the consolation prize he gets for being disarmed and emasculated is he now gets to be the head of the household, which is traditionally the woman's role. So the patriarchy in the medieval middle Eastern society has almost always produced substandard warrior cultures because the men are predominantly behaving like women in a merchant way and trying to micromanage things and always looking for leverage. They might do good politically. They might do good financially. Uh, they might have a lot of slave girls. OK, but a lot of their men aren't getting any pussy. OK, they're just not getting any action uh, because you're essentially the rich dudes are buying the broads and they're very rarely any good in combat. How many of them do you see really essentially good in in MMA in boxing? OK, they're always getting outclassed uh, by other cultures of people. So if you need a whole village of guys to keep your old lady in line while you're off kick, kicking the shit out of some other dude. No, I mean, that, that's just wrong. I mean, what you need is a little brother or a best friend or a father-in-law or a dad or a granddad that's going to protect your wife while you're away, okay? And so you go do your thing and you come back and she's glad to have you back. You know, th this got totally maimed by the feminism thing because it sent you both out of the house and then you're coming back at the same time. All right, so, you know, yeah, that, that there's a direct act there, there's a, a direct attack on masculinity implicit in patriarchy. I'll, I'll have fun with the patriarchy thing. OK, uh, you know, it, it's uh, but it comes from slavery. Patriarchy is not based on anything else. All the patriarchs of the Bible owned numerous men who were not allowed to bear arms. They owned children. They owned women. They owned slave girls. They had the authority that the king was going to send some killers out to keep anybody in line. That dude didn't have the authority to beat up all those, the masculine authority to beat up all those servants. They're afraid of the king with his band of thugs. Okay. It was like a moral feudalism. Okay. Uh, conjoined with these slave economics. And it's, I, I cover that in happily ever under that's in the biblical. I do two biblical chapters on it. It basically demonstrates how this works.
I think it's covered in, in masculine access as well because uh, we talked about how within African cultures there's more of what we perceive as matriarchy where women women own property and women because women do kind of like a a type of agriculture which isn't like what farming we do but anyway it's kind of a gardening um, the point is that their social uh, structure is what we would call matriarchal but it isn't really in contrast to patriarchy like in European cultures and families uh, paternity is very important you know your kids are your kids and uh, your wife's not supposed to be having other people's kids where that isn't super important in African cultures it's huge generalization okay um, but anyway that's covered in masculine access I mean the, the truth is that you there are two different spheres and they overlap the men's sphere and the women's sphere and it's not rejecting patriarchy is not saying that the single motherhood married to the government is a good alternative it's not a you know it's not a good alternative well patriarchy is what we have now with the narco tyranny you've got women married to the government voting for the government against their men that's patriarchy that's pure patriarchy you just take the men on the ground out of it that's what patriarchy does you go back and read the book of job almost every dude in that's a slave okay job is some kind of petty uh king or clan leader or tribe leader or something like that and most of the men under him are slaves including his sons okay and that's what patriarchy does it makes most men slaves you know and eventually once you put democracy in then the women get direct connection with the power structure instead of the patriarchs having that direct connection it accretes up to a single patriarchy grouped together on the top instead of a local patriarchy and i think it fosters a lot of hostility between men and women where you see these really hostile guys on the right wing that uh believe well first they believe that when all women are they have these weird ideas about women <laughs> you know it's not like women are innocent angels but they have these ideas that just are not also not reality about how wicked women are and how their our instincts are destructive and you know I mean you might say that too because of this democracy thing but it's because women's instincts are relative to a different sphere and so yeah you take these protective instincts and these socialistic instincts which make sense in a family setting and they don't make sense on larger scales but I just see this hostility on the part of the men I think it's this feeling that, that sometime in the past there was some kind of idyllic situation where women obeyed their men and where every man got a, a girlfriend like when he turned 18 or something you know he got issued a lifetime intimate partner and he didn't have to worry about that anymore and that now that all the risk of marriage is on men and I just think there's risk there's always been risk in marriage and there's inherent risk for women so I, I would like to see your uh, model of masculinity make some way in, inroads there. So, but well, it's an example of how patriarchy causes emasculation because most of the guys don't get laid or they've all got to go after the same whore, okay, which might have been a, a dancer way back in the day. Now, who, who knows? Maybe it's some kind of like virtual online girlfriend or something. Who knows? Uh, the generally guys – that are currently banging broads, okay, are not demonstrating a bunch of animosity towards women. The guys that demonstrate animosity towards women generally aren't getting laid. They have fallen for the whole goddess construct of civilization. And at some point, they let the fact that they had a mother and not a daddy and a teacher in school that was a female or a faggot get them into a state of worship of the feminine is like this high ideal and the masculine stuff like killing people and beating people up uh that's all bad okay and it's not good and masculine yin and yang the the the, the, the yang, you know the masculine is dark and the masculine is violent and, and and the woman is all good and then they end up putting this normal woman on a pedestal and then she fails to live up to their their expectations now look, the uh, one thing that guys that aren't getting laid and haven't had a lot of experience with women do not understand 
is that women are a lot more loyal than men. And now when racially oriented men look at the fact that women always sell their own men, black women have sold all their own men down the road into prison and put them on the government farm for money. White women have sold their men down the political road to the uh, taking their wages away, cut their wages in half, have are totally sidelining them through politicians, through elite politicians and money grubbers. This is this is loyalty. This is an expression of loyalty. Women are loyal to the patriarchy. All right. So now the patriarchy only consists of the super elite white men. That's it. That's all the patriarchy is. Super elite white men. You got the dissonant super elite white dude Trump out there. Most of the super super elite white dudes hate the regular white dudes. OK, scared to death of the black dudes. And they use the women, the direct appeal to women through the democracy engine and the woman's natural high level of loyalty to the patriarchy to screw almost all the dudes out there. OK, that's how it works. And if we lose a whole bunch, I, I hope we lose like 100 YouTube subscribers and like 10 Facebook likes on that. I really know that we did a good job of sorting terminal sissies out of this batch right here. Okay, so thanks a lot for taking me down this road, dear. I'm. Uh